Dr. Fear Isaac here from the Pain Free Maverick here at All Care PT, allcarept.com. I am doing the rotator cuff workshop. Stay with me, guys. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some love tonight. Um, and uh, you can see some really good value if you're having shoulder pain tonight. Thank you, guys. So we're zooming into the rotator cuff. So there's these four muscles here. And what they do is they're, I call it the transmission of the shoulder. You know what transmission of a car is? When you go into gear, right? The, the, the car stays in gear and it drives smoothly. But when we have pathology or injury, to anywhere in the shoulder girdle, which is part of the thoracic spine, your upper back, your neck, okay, which is over here, your shoulder, okay? When we have pathology or injury, right? Or bad posture, whatever it is, this transmission, the transmission of the shoulder fails. So what happens when you lift your arm up, like every one of you are complaining, these muscles stop working as a team. It's like an orchestra, right? The orchestra is run by a conductor. You know who the conductor is? Your brain. Your brain is the conductor. It sends electrical signals. Here's your brain. By the way, this is the back of your shoulder girdle. Okay, the back of your shoulder, your thorax. I'm a terrible artist, so forgive me. I tried to replicate this for you, but these are your ribs, these black uh, pieces that are sticking out. These are your vertebrae. The vertebrae are the bones of the thoracic spine and the cervical spine over here, C6, C7, T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And these are the discs. The discs are the jelly donuts in between that are like suspensions, okay? So these green things over here are nerves, okay? The nerves look like this. They look like wires, okay? Look like floss, okay? And they come off of here. That's called the brachial plexus. I'll be n naming this today. I'll be showing you. But it comes off of here, the brachial plexus, and they go and they bifurcate or spread down and touch all the muscles in the body. It's pretty amazing. So where does this all come from? The brain, right? The brain is where the processing happens, like a computer. And the brain sends down these electrical signals down the spinal cord. The spinal cord is right over here. That's what it looks like, okay? The spinal cord is protected intimately by the vertebrae, the bones. So the spinal cord is like a fiber optic cable. Just imagine it like a fiber optic cable. You know what fiber optic is? It's like a big tube with a lot of wires inside of it. So I tried to replicate that to show you. The brain has these wires that sends, it sends information down into these, behind these bones because of protection, and these other wires come out called the brachial plexus, all right? And they give electricity to each muscle of the shoulder. Doesn't that make sense? Something has to make that shoulder move, right? So what's actually happening with rotator cuff injury is people say, I have a rotator cuff pain, my arm is hurting, right? Or my neck is hurting, but they don't know. They think that they have a tear in their rotator cuff and they may well have a tear in their rotator cuff. Unfortunately, guys, many people, probably everyone in this audience has, and I probably have one too. I have fallen multiple times on my arm with snowboarding injuries and basketball and whatever. We all have rotator cuff injuries to our bodies when, um, when, as we're growing up, right? These are called wear and tear issues. But does that mean that something is wrong with us, that we're not functioning? We don't know. We don't know what actually causes the rotator cuff to be damaged, but it's wear and tear. But everybody is saying, I have a rotator cuff tear. That's where my pain is coming. It's not coming from there. In over 92, I'm gonna break this down for you guys, in over 92% of people out there, the pain is not coming from your muscle or your bone. Guess where it's coming from? Your nerves, okay? Let, let's, let's be logical here. What gives electricity to those muscles? The nerves. When the muscles don't have electricity, they don't know what to do with the bones. The bones are dumb, they only do what the muscles tell them to do. The, the muscles are just pieces of meat. So even if the muscle is partially torn, Right? Even if we have this wear and tear, these little, little nicks in the, in the muscle, if we have a little tear and it says like, you know, there's a little tear in the rotator cuff in the supraspinatus, and the, that doesn't mean that that's what's causing your pain. The electrical signals that are sending inf information, processing up to the brain, is causing the pain. It's giving up, that's what's causing your pain because something is not moving correctly in there. So let me see if I can break this down for you. I'm gonna say this to you and really simply put. put I want you to imagine your brain. This is gonna break it down, and then I'm gonna go into the three causes of what can cause a shoulder pain that you may be having. Even though you think it's rotator cuff or arthritis, it's not, okay? In 92% of the cases, only 8% have true problems, true structure issues. 
So let's break it down. I want to say this to you guys. I want you to imagine your brain is a faucet of water. A faucet, okay? It turns on water, right? Now, these wires are no longer wires. They're a hose. It's a hose, a tube with water in it. The water's flowing down, and it's going all the way down, all the way down your spine. If I were to take my hand and squeeze that hose, I want to ask you a question. This makes a lot of sense. Will the, the water flow down to this area? If I squeeze it here, if I squeeze it here, will the water flow down? Yeah. No, it would not. So anybody there in the audience today, or my Facebook friends, if you're having pain here, right, and you have pain when you lift it or you move it, okay, something is squeezing along this hose, okay, this pipe, something is squeezing and not letting the electricity flow down. Replace the water with electricity now. It's flowing down, right? Electricity. I'm going to squeeze it. Will I get electricity to these muscles? No. Somewhere along this area, from where the neck begins, here to here, to these muscles, into the plexus, which, are the, which is this, the plexus, which, which is the bright bifurcation or breakdown, like the superhighway breaks. It's like... If you drive a car, the Long Island Expressway becomes the BQE. It's the same highway, it just changes its name. And then the BQE becomes Ocean Parkway. So the cervical spine becomes C4, C5, C6, the levels of the spine. And then it breaks off into these roots. The roots come off and you have the C5 root. Then the C5 root breaks off, C6, and becomes the median nerve. And all these nerves give and supply electricity to these different muscles. Okay, make sense? So if we squeeze somewhere along this line, if I cut it off here, I'm gonna have a problem there. If I cut it off here, I'm gonna have a problem here at the neck. But the electricity will not flow, and that is what causes over 92% of your pain. They've shown in studies, tons of studies, that there's a lot of false positives with the MRIs. So people get MRIs, they go to the doctor, and the doctor will find something on the MRI. They will find an old tear. There will be some, I didn't say that everybody will have something, but the majority of people, over 75% of people, will, will have some pathology. I'm sure I have some cavities in my teeth. But thank God, I've never had to go to the dentist to have it repaired. But the dentist tells me, yeah, I see a little hole there, I see a little, but I don't have any pain. So these are like little cavities. I like to say, that rotator cuff tears, or wearing down, or degenerative joint, joint disease, or arthritis, you know what that is? It's becoming older, wrinkles in your body. So these are normal findings, okay? Now, people that have trauma, the only people that need an MRI, in my opinion, truly need an MRI, are the 8% of the people that truly have structural problems, which we'll talk about in a minute. One of these issues over here, structure, okay? Structure means something is really ripped, torn, damaged, like the whole shoulder is worn out and they hear crunching and they have crazy pain at night. That means the structure of the joint is worn out. It's like a ball and socket joint that has to be replaced. Very few people have that much arthritis in their joint. We all have arthritis. You guys agree with me? Okay, so who needs an MRI? People that had trauma. Trauma means a fall, an injury, a football injury, a dislocation. Even, in, even some dislocations don't get MRIs, but something traumatic. And I've seen it in the clinic before. So who has a true rotator cuff injury that needs surgery? I'm gonna tell you straight up right now. Usually, it's the baseball players, the football players that have to use their arm. They get those things repaired because they need perfect shoulders to play their game. Who else? People that have a full thickness tear. Full thickness tear means complete rip. A complete rip right here. Through the tendons, all through. Let's say they fell down on a street and like almost like a like a like the street had like a sharp edge and cut the tendons. I've seen that with a I've seen that in my early years with a uh, with a guy who was a, a iron worker. He fell on the iron work that he did. It sliced his arm literally. He ended up with surgery. He couldn't lift his arm. So who is the person that needs that MRI? Someone with a drop arm. A drop arm means they hold their arm, they cannot hold their arm, their arm drops. That person needs an MRI. Everybody else falls into these three buckets. 
okay? You're everybody else, and even my friends on Facebook. So pay attention, guys. Let's talk about flavor number one. Flavor number one, okay? I'm gonna make it flavors for you, different types of, of shoulder injuries that, call, that cause your pain, okay? Who is the person with a disc herniation? Who has heard of the word disc herniation? Do you guys know what a disc herniation is? Correct. Okay. Yes, she's right. The disc is herniated. What does that mean? Well, guys, let's take a look. I'm going to show you a healthy disc. A healthy disc is that yellow right there. Okay. What is the disc? The disc is a gelatinous material inside, like a jelly donut. It looks like a jelly donut, literally. Okay. On the outside, it's nice and nice and thick, and on the inside, it's got jelly inside of it. Okay. And it's a cushion. It's like a spring, okay, between your bones. So who here, <laughs> over the years, has felt that they're getting older and shorter? I said the word older because when you get older, you get shorter. So everybody's getting a little shorter, right? We're all getting a little shorter. What's happening? Our discs are desiccating, that drying out. The word desiccation means drying out. For all those that don't know that word, they dry out. So what happens? They dry out. And under the age of 50, if you're over 50 years old, your disc is already dried out, de degenerated in that area of your spine. So who is the person with the disc herniation causing their pain? Let me describe this person for you. This is the person, and you may be thinking that you may have one of these, but you probably don't. This is the person who has tingling and numbing in their fingers, usually the first two fingers. They feel it in their first two fingers, in their forearm, and they cannot sit. They cannot sleep. They have to hold their arm like this over their head to, to relax the nerves out of the neck. Okay? These are the people with a disc herniation. They have tremendous pain and nothing relieves their pain. The only thing that gives them pain, pain relief in their shoulder is if they do traction to decompress the neck. Okay? Does that sound like you guys? Me. Okay, you may have that. You may have that as a secondary component of your problem, possibly. But generally, the person with a true disc herniation and not just a, a compression of the nerves outside of the neck has severe pain, and they even have some weakness and numbing in their fingers. Can't pick up nothing off. The can't floor. pick something up off the floor. Okay, you may have more of a degenerative stenosis in there, which we'll talk about later but they cannot pick things up off the floor, they have no power in their hand, they actually lose power in their arm possibly, that's more of a degenerative, but the early stage disc has weakness and, and uh, tingling in the fingers, forearm, and the pain is traveling past the shoulder region. Find that. The pain is all the way down. So if you're not having pain, hi Mrs. Bosky, if you're not having pain going all the way down into your hand, most certainly you don't have flavor number one. This is usually for someone who was involved in a whiplash accident or someone who sits at their computer all day long like that. I've seen it in CEOs, stressed out people that sit all day at a computer and then they come into the office and they're just like, I don't know what to do with my neck. Now, they have shoulder pain, right? So do they have a rotator cuff? Maybe, but is that what's causing their problem? No. So the, remember we said the spinal cord has these roots. And those roots come out and they rename themselves. So here is at the disc level, let's talk about the disc number one. None of you guys have that because you wouldn't be able to sit here today. The disc is the healthy gelatinous material. It's like a jelly donut. Inside it has jelly. When the jelly explodes and pr puts pressure, it puts pressure right over here. You see the jelly donut right over here? It puts the pressure on that wire. So what did I say earlier? When the wire is squeezed, Will I have electricity flowing to the muscles? No. So I'm going to have pain and weakness. Okay? And what, how do I decompress a disc? How do I fix, fix a disc? The number one single best exercise for disc herniation is the McKenzie method. There's nothing better out there. So guys on Facebook, friends, I want to bring you some value tonight. If you're having tingling, numbing, shooting pain in your fingers, in your hand, this may even help you. Um, this exercise is the simplest, easiest exercise in the world to help you. And what does it do? It's called a chin tuck retraction. Basically, you basically push the disc back off the nerve, and it looks like this. You just tuck your chin, and you're forcing your chin back. 
When you do that, what it does is it decompresses and takes the pressure off of this area right here. And it pushes the jelly back away off of the nerve root, takes the way, and you get the flow back in the electrical signal of the muscle. I will be showing you that later today, how to use these different exercises. But like I said, for the disc patient, this McKenzie method is very, very effective. Also, if that doesn't work, traction. You'll see traction machines, like something that pulls your neck in a laying down position like this, and then releasing. Or a better way to do that is to test yourself like this. If you're having tingling or numbing in your hand or discomfort, you can try it later. You basically grab the back of your head, and then you basically pull yourself up like that. So that's the first exercise, and we're gonna review that later. That's called traction. Okay, now, so none of you guys have number one. Let's go into number two, and then I'm gonna show you number three, which is the single most misdiagnosis on by doctors because a lot of them can't figure out really what's the cause because there's so many flavors that come along with number three, and, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Okay, who is the person who has flavor number two? Pay attention. So the first flavor was a person below the age of 50 usually, okay? Flavor number two is above the age of 50. Why? Because the disc is already dried out, okay? And the bones are now starting to touch each other. Who has heard on their MRI or have heard friends and family say, I have degenerative disc disease? DDD, it says it on the MRI. It's a fancy term, you know what it means? Degenerative disease, I see some people here that may have it. Degenerative disc disease. Usually it's someone over the age of 57. And usually, I, I've seen it in 60, or 60 year olds, but usually it's 57 plus. Why? Because the disc is already really worn out and the bones are really starting to touch one another. It, does that mean that life is over, over for that person? No, it doesn't mean that life is over for that person. But this person, what do they feel? This person has this, either this, this, and this. Who, who's heard of the term arthritis? You know what it means in Latin? What does it mean? Arth means joint in Latin. Itis means inflammation of a joint. That's it. I have arthritis. You have arthritis. Everyone has arthritis. Does that mean that you have pain because of arthritis? What causes pain? Nerves. Arthri arthritis, everybody has. It's an internal wrinkle. So if your x-ray says you have moderate arthritis, so what? Who cares? If you can do this and you can work out and dance, who cares, right? It's an internal wrinkle. So does the x-ray really tell us anything? No, if you have trauma, now we're talking. The x-ray is necessary. Again, the x-ray is not necessary unless you have trauma, fall, injury. You fell down, you injured yourself. So arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Stenosis is in this category. Stenosis, you know what stenosis means, guys? Somebody told me, I was doing a workshop at a Greek, like one of these Greek uh, centers, and they told me it's a Greek word, it's not Latin, and I took Latin in high school. So actually, um, stenosis means narrowing, so narrowing of the canal. So if you guys see over here, the canal is the holes that make up the spine, and those wires come out, right? So what happens is they get crushed. The wires in the canal get crushed, and the bones start to touch, and the electrical signals, guess what happens? If, if the bones are now crushing the wires, what are you going to feel? What are you going to feel? Weak right. You're going to feel weakness you're gonna feel more weakness and heaviness. So who is the person who has flavor number two causing their shoulder pain? This is the person, let me describe it, it may be you. This is the person who cannot lift up both of their arms. It's both of your arms, 99% of the time. So 2009, you had this uh, accident and you had some herniated discs. Yeah. Yep. 2010, and then, I had this one. And 2000, what, what happened in 2010? How did, what did they do over here? I bang this against the door to get out of the car. To get out of the car, you smacked your shoulder. Yeah. They, and they put, you said a rod in there? They put a rod, a metal rod? A nut and bolt. A nut and bolt. And then over there? Both of them. On both of them. So you're really the bionic man. Bandos. Yeah, I've got, got all it. The bands on my wrist because the pain is very bad. So you're having pain in both your wrists yeah. because the pain is really bad. Very bad. Gotcha. And. At night, I put the one that has the metal strip underneath here. Yep. And you pull the thing like this and. Put it on top, uh -huh. and then you got a little piece that pushes here. And I tell you, that little piece does the job. Really? Push. Yeah, it gives you pressure in here. So a little piece that puts pressure here takes yeah. away, what does it take away? 
The pain. The pain where? The wrist? Oh, the yeah, form? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Does he say so? You see this block? Yep. I just saw here. Okay. Like a gully. Yep. My muscle. Yep. The pain in here pulls here and here. If Got I keep my arm like this, uh -huh. maybe five minutes, I gotta bring it up. Yep. Because this wants to fall out. So this man over here, he's like the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, he, he had these both shoulders uh, done. His neck is all locked up. He's flavor number two. He's flavor number two. He's, he's got that uh, uh, degenerative disc disease in his neck, probably, that's causing his pain in his forearms and that crazy pain in the forearms. And he's having the wrist pain. Guys, give me a second. Uh, and the wrist pain. And, um, and I, I think he's flavor number two. And that's what I think his problem is. So, you know, he says at night when he sleeps, he puts like pressure over here. This is like an acupump acupressure point where the nerves actually enter. This is where the nerves actually enter, actually the C8 nerve. C8 nerve is right over here. I wonder why, because that's where his neck is trapped. So I'm not even gonna look at his shoulders. I'm not gonna treat his shoulder, I'm gonna treat his neck. I'm gonna do some traction on it, do some pressure at the brachial plexus area, and you can ask question after, okay? Okay. Just please. Um, so that's really what I'm gonna do. And you had physical therapy, right? Yes. Regular traditional physical therapy. Acupuncture also. Acupuncture also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Man. Yes, I do. Sorry about that. All right, so let me take a look at you. Now, again, yes, guys, sorry. guys on Facebook, friends, family, that. I always go crazy and do these really difficult cases in front of a crowd. Like, And today I'm doing it on Facebook, so please forgive me if I don't make magic tonight. You know, I just like this guy. He, he came here, and he, he was nice enough to get up here. I never met him before, right? Nope. And uh, let, let's take a look here. So lift up your arm. This one goes fine. Yeah. Okay, well, let's take a look sideways so we can see the range of movement. All right. All right. Lift it up as high as you can. You have any pain with that? Nope. All right. Let's take a look at that left one. No, you gotta be careful. Because it gets, I gotta be careful? It gets stuck. Let's take, it gets stuck. He's got impingement. He's got a whole bunch of, he's got flavor number two and number three. It's the one that's got the nuts and bolts, the big bolts. Yeah, nothing to worry about the nuts and bolts there. Lift it up. Yeah. That's it? Luck to luck. Come on. No power. See, by now. Go ahead. That's it? Go ahead. Okay, so I can move you. I yeah. can move you. So I can, so if I don't you, move you, you, you can't lift it from this point? Yeah, I can go like this. Yep. And now you get the burning sensation, it burns. Okay, it burns. Got it. All right, and now when I, when you lift it all the way up and I uh -huh. push it, that's and it? I gotta fight it, see? You're fighting me. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. But why some nights I could go, like, if I will go and I will go. I raised my two hands all the way up. Some nights you can do it and some nights you can't? Who's been stressing you out? Nobody's stressing you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see here. Okay. I do that. Okay, I do that, that helps I you a little that. bit? Yeah. All right. So when you oh, yeah. yeah. He has, he has no mo motion. You have no, no motion in the forearm at all. He, he lost all his motion there. How about sometimes the hand goes like this? Yeah, the hand gets all tied up. Yeah. yeah. That's so because the, ner the nerves are act acting really funny. So guys, um, <laughs> this is somebody that I would, I would, I would, I would spend some time put with. Put new parts in it. I can put some new parts, right? Okay. Exactly. I can't give him new parts, but I can give him, uh, I can give him nerves that work. I can teach his nerves how to turn on again. He's kind of like forgot how to use them. Yeah. Can you bring this arm up as high as you can, buddy? Can you drop it? That's it. That's it. All right. So now you reach for your wallet all the time, huh? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> take me a long time. How about this one? Charge it. Okay, so we can see it's up to the belt line. That's yeah, as far as I can get it. He's locked. He's yeah. up. All right, buddy. Come up onto the table over here. Have a seat. All right. I'll, I'll do this in, I'll try to do like a five minute thing on him. Okay? And then we'll do sit. Yeah, please. All right. So I always like to check pitches. <laughs> yeah, he, he's getting paid for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Relax with me. Okay. So I, I like to check everybody's reflexes before I, I start because I just want to know that he's, you know, there's no... There's a lot to it. There's life. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Make a muscle for me, buddy. I just want to see if he has power. Hold your arm up. Hold strong. Give me some power this way. Up. This is uh, the rotator cuff. And he's got super power in there for a guy that's a bionic man and has uh, hardware in here. Because hardware. I'm young. Because you're young. Hold it there. Don't let me move you. Got a sense of humor. Hold it. Yes, he does. That's important. Hold strong. Don't let me move you. Okay, bring it back for me. Up, hold like that. Hold strong. All right. Bring your arm back. Hold strong. Don't ah. let me. Up. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In here. All right. Remember that. Get back. Yeah. Get back. Yeah. Get back. For sure. Because you're not activating here, my man. 
this is this is where your problem is. Hold your index finger up. Up. Okay. That is weak there, and that tells me that the nerve in here is not working. Open your fingers apart. Don't let me move you. Yep, he's weak there. Bring your thumb up. Okay, and then bring your thumb towards your nose. All right, good. Same thing. Hold, open your finger up this way. Up, up. Okay, fingers apart. And bring your thumb down to the floor. Bring your thumb down. Flex it down. Good. And then this one. Bring it down to the floor. All right, this one's worse. Okay, lay back on your back. All right, uh, head over here. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me just see something in your neck. Check your neck a little bit. Yeah. All right. Look up with me. Does that hurt at all? In the back. In the back. All right. Lay back. With me. Did you? Were you involved in any accidents? Did you hit your head at all? Florida. How long ago was that? Is the 09 time? 2009. Yep. 2004. Yep. Uh, 2011. Uh huh. Okay. Are you having any problems swallowing or anything like that? So I ask a lot of questions. I want to know about the neurology of the patient. Um, yes. The food goes down okay. The food goes down okay, that's good. Lie back. So we ask a bunch of questions as physiotherapists. We, we, we diagnose like, like a combination of neurologists, orthopedists, and uh, sports medicine doctors. Slide down a little bit. You know, because we've seen it all. Even cardiologists. We know a lot about the cardiology system too. Wake me up later. Wake you up later. He, he's, he's just, he's just uh, looking forward to getting the freebie here, you know? All right. Okay, so you guys remember what I said? He's got that, uh, the brachial plexus is over here. There's uh, that, that nerve, bunch of nerves in here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and press, up. oh, he jumps. Remember he said the left side's worse. Okay, and I'm gonna check his range of movement. Now, if he went to a typical physical therapy place, right, and, and I'm not knocking typical traditional physical therapy, many of them are great, but they would do this. Come on, let's push you, right? I'm not going to do that to him because he, look, he's fighting me. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't want to hit me, right? Yes, no. I, I, know. I know. I know. So I'm going to do a little bit of pressure over here. I'm going to have him relax. I'm going to have him do some breathing. So look, guys, all I'm doing is putting pressure on the largest organ in the body, the skin. So I'm putting pressure on the skin of the body. Well, what is the skin? It is the organ of the body. And it envelops all the nerve endings, right? So if the skin has all the or, uh, all the skin uh, all the skin has the nerve endings in it, then if we press on those different parts of the skin, that's why massage feels so good, and we get the areas moving again, it's able it allows the brain to go, hey, I didn't know that I can use that part of my body again. Now does this stuff last? Yes, it does. It lasts longer than any massage, any um, exercise program because actually it builds a foundation for neural mobility. Okay, tilt your head to the right, to the right. And this is called neuromuscular therapy. You've probably heard that before. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in, buddy. You're feeling I feel it in my lower back? What you doing? Bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better. better, yeah. Fluttering in the back. Yeah, yeah, take a deep breath in. And tilt your head to the right a little bit. Good, and relax. Better? Yeah. Take a, deep, take a deep breath in. Now everything's connected, right? So his nervous system is all on overdrive. Tilt your head to the right. You guys familiar with flight or fight? You know, the autonomic nervous system? So when you're nervous and it's dark out and you're afraid someone's following you? His nervous system is always thinking that something is gonna attack me, something's hurting me. So we're, we're relaxing his autonomic nervous system. Relax, my friend. You okay? Yeah, good. Feels good? Okay, That's take good. a deep breath, tilt to the right again. And breathe in deep and breathe out. All right, one more time. Good job. All right, good job. Take a deep breath again and breathe out. Tilt your head to the left. <clears throat> left, 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 left. Good job. Relax. Now, there's no hardware in the neck, right? No. No, bre no breaks no in the neck. No, no broken no. things. No. Okay. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. So you had acupuncture, right? Yes. That stuck the needles in the neck like? 2004. Yeah. Did it help? Uh, three months I was there. Okay. Three months. Take three a deep breath. A week. Tilt your head to the left again. Good job. Let it go. All right. Let it go. Okay. Bend both of your knees. Now, you know, 
there's a really deep relationship between this area of his body to his neck, so I'm just gonna do a little quick stretch there and get that working. Take a deep breath. It's called your diaphragm. Breathe out. Breathe out. Good. My father used to do this. Yeah? Your father used to do that? In Italy. Oh, in Italy, wow. Osteopath. Your dad was an osteopath? No. Take a deep breath. Breathe out. Breathe out. One more time. Take a deep breath in again. Breathe out. Good. One more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Let it 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 out. Good. One more time. Breathe in and let it out. Breathe out. Good. And now I'm going to do an active approach. I'm going to get him to activate. He's not moving this part of his body. Take a deep breath in. Good. And breathe out. Go ahead. Breathe into my hand and breathe out. And I'm actually telling the muscle to work again. Breathe in and breathe out. Take a deep breath in. And this is the kind of stuff you would get if you came to this office. And for some people, it would be more gentle. And for some people, it would be more aggressive. He's a, he's a pretty tough cookie, so I would go a little more aggressive with him, okay? Take a deep breath in. Can you break a bone with this? This is not chiropractory. I'm not slamming a bone, you know? Take a deep breath in and breathe out. And I'm not saying chiropractors are bad. There are some really awesome chiropractors. I refer a lot of business to them when I can't help somebody. Breathe out. But for certain cases, they don't help. So breathe in and breathe out. And one more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Good. One more. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good job. All right. Put a little pressure over here. Yeah. Yeah. He says he has pain here. Guess what, guys? You remember on the, on the map here? Bam. Where are we? Brachial plexus. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, 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 breathe out. Okay, now hold your arm like this and don't let me push you down. Good, and push back to me. Back, back, this way. Push me back, this way. Back, yes. Good. Do it again. Push back. Okay, bend your, bend your elbow. Relax, relax, relax. Okay, you see the active approach? I'm actually getting him to use his muscles. He hasn't worked them in ages. Hold it, hold it back. Bring it up. Good. And this is his rotator cuff. So he injured his arm. He had hardware in there. Shouldn't he be crying right now? Nope. He, he needs this, okay? He's not using them again. There's nothing wrong with the hardware. Yeah, you got your thumb, it hurts. I know, I know, I know. Hold it there. We're not looking for pain relief so much, we're looking for function. Can this guy lift his arm better after? Good. Relax, my friend. One more time, hold it right there. Bring it up to the ceiling, hold it up. Push me, push me, push me, push me. Good job, all right. Okay, one last thing, and then he's gonna get up, okay? You feeling good? Oh, I'm just so enjoying it. I know, I know, I know. See, all right. Anthony, come back to me. Come back, come back, come back, come back. This is when I this is when I have a good friendship with the guy. There goes my neck. There goes his neck. I have a good friendship already with him. I would never do this if we were in friends. Now we're friends. We're friends? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm not gonna do any whipping or chiropractory. What I'm gonna do is I'm or adjustment. No, 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 no adjustments. I'm just gonna do some Mackenzie. Remember I talked about traction? Do you remember that? Okay. So am I really you know, am I really like decompressing his nerves? No, I'm stretching them just to tell the brain that he can use them again for a short period of time. Then I'm gonna have him do pull-ups and strengthen, okay? All right, relax, tuck your chin, good. And I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit. How's that feel? Mm -hmm. You okay? You have to crack? No cracks. If I wanted to, I could, but I'm not going to. No need for that, no need for the crack. Take a deep breath in, hold it, and out, good. Good. And am I pulling hard on you? No. no. I'm, just, I'm just giving him a little bit of. Feels good. Behind feels the good. Neck. Feels good behind the neck. Good. One more time. And I'm giving him maybe like 10 pounds of force. One more time. Good. And again. All right. Now, all you're gonna do for me now, mm. and remember we talked about the active approach. None of this stuff is like, oh, get up and go home. He's gonna use his muscles now. Okay. Tuck your chin. And hold it there. Don't let your head down now. You make a fool of yourself if you let your head go smack into the floor. Mm -hmm. All right? 
<clears throat> he's activating these muscles again because he hasn't used them in ages. Now, have I touched the shoulder? I literally went, I never went to the actual shoulder. I went like to the girdle, the ribs, and, and all these other places. I don't wear a girdle. <laughs> and I know you don't wear a girdle. I meant the girdle of the shoulder. <laughs> okay. Tuck your chin a little bit. <clears throat> Good, and relax one more time. Excellent. Now look up to me a little bit. Now again, I would never, if I would have taken an easy case, something like vanilla, it would have been done in like a minute ago. But I, I'm, I'm spending more time with this guy. Look up, look up to me. Up, 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 good. And look up, good. And then last thing is we're gonna strengthen is tuck your chin a little bit, and then hold your head there strong, don't let me push you. Good, and bring it down slowly. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And he's activating the muscles he hasn't used in ages. He said before he can't move his neck. No, he couldn't. Tuck your chin. Look at that. Hold strong. Bring it down slowly. Good. Good job. Up again. Hold strong, 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 strong. Good. Don't let me move you. Bring it down. Good. Listen, I get my exercise too. Mm -hmm. Hold strong. Why, why do you think I picked this job? <laughs> I, can eat, I can eat donuts all day, right? Hold strong. <laughs> I can eat donuts and, 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 and get a, a workout at the same time. It's a wonderful job. Daniel, you're going to be a physical therapist. You're going to love it. One more time. Everyone thanks Daniel. He's holding up the camera. He's a great guy. He's going to school to be a physical therapist. Tuck your chin a little bit. Hold it up strong. And bring it down. And bring it up. Up, 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 up. And all I'm doing is, remember the active approach? I'm actually telling his muscles to work. This guy has never used these muscles. He got a massage there, but no one actually told him to activate it. That's why he never got better. Up, 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 up. One more time. Keep going. Again, hold strong, and then bring it down slowly. Okay. And last one. Okay. Relax. Relax your head. Good. One more time. Okay. Slide back on the table, Anthony. Okay. Just go back on the table. Slide back. You want to go? Slide back on the table. Done it. You falling asleep on me? No. <laughs> Enjoy this. I know you're enjoying it, right? You're going to leave me a tip. <laughs> you're going to leave me a tip, huh? All right, let's take a look at that shoulder now. There you go. Let's Bam! Look at that. Woo! Great. Does it hurt? No. No, he did, he did magic. He did on his own. See? Da, da, da. <laughs> and he's dancing for us. Hey, show us to the top. Go to the top. Do the, do the, do the little dance that you do, Mike. There you go. How's it feel, man? Good. Can you do that? Sit up, sit up. Can you do that when he stands up? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I have them. I'm going to sell them on eBay. Oh, okay. I need to get something out of this, right? Here. Look at this. Stand up and show everybody what you got. Really good. No, no. Let's do behind the back everything. Let's let's do the let's let's see that. Can you do the things that you couldn't do before? So the first thing is turn your head right and left. All the way. Turn left. Turn left. He's got full range of movement, like he's 22. Okay. Look up. Look down. Okay, now lift the arm up all the way. Lift the other arm up all the way. Ah. Now, hands behind the head, no hand, no pain. Okay, go behind you. Okay, now, here's for the real deal. Can he bring it behind his back? Can you reach? Can you reach? Yes, he can. Not, that one's a little stiff, not bad, but not bad. All right, everyone give him a hand. Huh? He can get to, now he's so going past the wall. To the wall. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah? Feels good. So, yeah. So, how did it feel? Did it hurt? No, but not burns. It burns. You know what that means? Underneath our skin, we have something called fascia. Does anyone here cook chicken? Yeah. So, after you, peel, right, after you peel the skin off, there's that white kind of cellophane -y mm -hmm. kind of stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. and it sticks to the meat. That fascia, when years and years go by after damage or, or trauma or sitting for many... Everything gets bound down, right? The fascia gets tight. What do you think lives underneath the fascia? Where are my, my nerves. The nerves live underneath the fascia. Is that like plantar Yeah, so plantar fasciitis, exactly. The fascia gets wound down, bound down, and the nerves, the little nerves underneath there, they get stuck to each other. Like the nerves need to slide and move and glide. So if the fascia is not moving, guess what's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to create burning sensation. So the burning sensation is actually... The fascia has heat sensors in it. Each, the fascia, that stuff underneath the skin, when you feel relief of pain, the heat's being released from there. That, the fascia has heat sensors, it releases heat. So you may feel warmth coming out of there after the treatment. 
You may feel like a feeling of cracking or popping. Things are going to start snapping around. That's the fascia moving better again. And those nerves, what I did for him is I freed up all these nerves over here. Now, I won't leave him like that. This guy is going to be doing some serious exercises. He's going to go back to be a boxer again. You got the, the what do you call it, drawings? The drawings, which drawings? Which kind of exercise? Yes, we we'll give you That's exercise, good. drawings, videos, things yeah. for him to do at home, home exercise routine. So guys, what does it take to see a physiotherapist? Not a physical therapist, physiotherapist. There's a difference between physio and physical. Physical therapy is generic in general. You can get it down the block. It's like Starbucks. But we're like a little bit different. We do more of an active approach. This neurocorrective training program that I developed here took me years and years and years to master. And I'm, I'm delivering it to you guys because I, I care about you and I want you guys to get the results, okay? Going to traditional physical therapists, if they're not putting their hands on you and moving you, they're not doing physiotherapy. If they're not having you activate the muscles and the nerves after, they're not doing physiotherapy. If they're not examining you thoroughly, asking you questions of what's happening, why is this, this not moving, strength testing you, checking all the joints around your shoulder and your muscles, that's not physiotherapy, that's traditional. Oh, the doctor wrote a hot pack in the stimulator, so that's what I'm gonna do, some massaging on you, okay? So that's the difference between physiotherapy and physical therapy. We're active, physical therapy is traditional and passive. Um, and uh, if you ever needed physical, physiotherapy, we're at www.allcarept.com or thepainfreemaverick.com. I have a bunch of free videos there, guys, on Facebook. If you wanna go there, put your email in there and you'll get some free content from me. If you ever want to see me here in the clinic, just shoot me an email at info at allcarept.com. I'm happy to help you. I want to thank Anthony tonight. Um, I want to thank you for, for being such a great guy and helping me out tonight. Um, and let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.